Hello gorgeous, I'm Puka Luka Tuka, your favorite agender witch, and I would love for you to join me as I put on some zombie hun makeup for a photo shoot. Start with a clean face and then prepare yourself for my eyebrows because they will have opinions over the next 15 minutes and grab a mirror. I put mine where it was not helpful for all of us, so I needed a second to get it in the right place, but we live, we learn, here we are. Start with a white liner pencil and outline where we think teeth would be anatomically on the face because we're going to create a cheek application that looks exposed so our teeth are hanging out of our face. I liked to put down some thicker white lines because later it'll be easier to draw on the teeth but we do also want to fill it in pretty well. So that way, again, it's easier to color the teeth later and the eyebrows know it, so in the brows we trust. Grabbing some tissue paper, some regular facial tissue, we're going to cut out a section that's just bigger than where the teeth would be, which clearly took me a couple tries, but we got it. Third time's a charm. Then you're gonna grab your liquid latex and very gently, but deliberately, pull the liquid latex right over the edges so we get those puppies real secure. However, what you're not gonna wanna do is get it in your hair, cause that hurts really, really bad when it's super dry and hours later. So back to gently and thinly, but deliberately applying those layers of latex, trying to keep the paper as taut as possible so it's as close to the skin as we can get it. In places like around the mouth where your body's gonna move a lot, you know, there's a lot of movement, I did, you know, pretty thoroughly kick that section on there. But I took off a little bit of the access, because again, it's gross around your mouth. But I did put a little bit on the top of my lips to create an aged, textured kind of look around my mouth, and a blow dryer, because that's gonna really save you a lot of time and energy before you have to apply your second layer of liquid latex. And I'm adding a little bit of a stippled liquid latex around my cheeks to create like some wounds. So back with the blow dryer, have a moment, feel glamorous, but then it's too hot for your eyes. So just get back to business. Grab your sponge, get ready for some cream white makeup. The application is dry, we love to see it. And gently around your eyeballs, because we want to be gentle with the eyeballs. But we're great. Let's do eyeshadow. So in the crease there, you're gonna wanna start with a black shadow because we want to essentially accentuate the shadows that naturally occur within the skull. So right in your like eye cave there, we're going to blend for the gods because that's what we do and add a little bit of this kind of sky teal blue shadow to create the light in between the shadows and the highlights, right? So that kind of interesting spectrum in between. But I wanted to add this really beautiful bright blue pigment because we're a zombie hun. We're not just any zombie. We're like from hun, we're Bulmore huns. So. We pack that in very gently because it is a pigment, so it's gonna fall a lot more than regular shadows in a palette, but that's okay. We want an uneven texture and the eyebrows are digging it, so we know it's good. Put some eyeliner on. That's a painful process for all of us to watch, so I just skipped past it, covered up a little bit of the fallout, and then on to accentuating the nose. So again, we're kind of like going with a contour, but with the intention being that, you know, like the skin is casually being taken off the face. And the powder's not gonna work over the liquid latex. So we're gonna add a little bit of cream black on both sides. Cause even though we're cutting into the latex, we want some definition and uh, symmetry. Symmetry, goodness. So onto the lip lines to create those kind of you know lip wrinkles, as if we have been dehydrated from being dead. And again, carving out where the skull would be. And you know what? Mistakes happen, but we're getting creative. 
and using that for, again, the natural wrinkles and shadows that we're gonna create anyway. So going back in with the blue to create that dimension. The ADHD is running strong because we're all over the place. We're doing the chin, we're doing the cheeks, we're doing the lips, we're doing the wrinkles. Live your life, follow your heart. And some more drama around the nose into the cheeks there and we want we want to look again we want the texture so we don't want it to be perfect i love a nice stipple technique and a little bit of cream to start going into the wrinkles on the forehead digging it even though i mean you'll you'll all love this you won't see any of the wrinkles once i put the wig on it's well, the forehead. Anyway, so onto the crow's feet. Those you'll see. Kind of pull a little bit down and then up. We are going to blend some of these in and go in later with another another cream. Another uh, I like to use liquid liner, but the cream is really nice because it does have that blendability. So when we're doing the first layers of these wrinkles, that's gorgeous. So in again with the blue because we want to create that dimension the lighter blue i mean obviously i mean i mean we're all looking at it okay so into these beautiful wrinkles i think they're coming quite along and uh yeah my face agrees back with these lights see do you, are you digging it are you seeing how there's some dimension we're gonna go add some wrinkles under the eyes so same deal let's kick that in really good under there that light blue and use our liquid liner to start emphasizing these wrinkles draw these wrinkles around the, the eyes because they're very fine lines and then yep into the crow's feet it really helps to keep the continuity of the lines at this point since we've done a lot of blending in the shadows now let's really define those wrinkles blend it back into the crow's feet and then get some brows on that beat because we love a brow in this house so we're gonna darken up those brows with a black pencil we're gonna feel ourselves for a little bit and then again back with the, the black liquid liner some of my, my god i love black liquid i love black liquid liner it's perfect over the eyebrows it's so versatile it makes these beautiful lines to make the eyebrows look a little furrier we love that we love a dramatic brow baby boom gorgeous then we're gonna blend that in a little bit more so we have again the evenness we know we, if you do makeup you're not new here you know we love a blend we need to blend and the eyebrows are already feeling their fantasy so on to some of these extra applications let's go this is just a regular piece of moss out of one of those craft moss bags that I'm putting some liquid latex on and again, just a little on my face to prime it. And we're gently going to hold that in place. And uh, you didn't see me wait for it, but it worked. And we're going to conceal that liquid latex with some other cream paint from just a bruise wheel. If you want to look those up, it's like five different colors that special effects makeup artists use for well bruises and other things <laughs> other things that happen to the skin but i am going to use the these green tones from the bruise wheel to blend with the moss and i mean i think it's working so just keep keep doing it a little bit of a stippling around the edges of the liquid latex and then a little bit of a sponge one of those harder sponges that has the texture to it not like a blending sponge and then a little bit of the brush to go in to the element, the parts where the liquid latex was, you know, stippled. So it really gets that color in there. And the brows are giving us their seal of approval. So onto the scarier part, you want to very, very gently, that's why I didn't even speed this portion up, very gently 
cut through your application so that way you can open it up and expose those teeth. I figured you didn't need the anxiety to watch all of that. So there it is, exposed. Now we're gonna continue to disguise our application there and cross our fingers because here goes the, uh, the color portion inside there. So again, it's harder to see in the video, but follow some of those darker white lines that we made earlier with the black liner so we can get the outline of the teeth going a little quick check-in yeah it looks about looks about where my teeth are so perfect and then making a little bit more first of all effort to make sure you can see me because that is a thing that's important for a video on how to do this but it also is hard to see around you know a part of your cheek that doesn't usually exist so be patient with yourself gently carve out a little bit of you know um, negative space between the teeth and a little bit of texture very very gently on the teeth since you know teeth have natural shadows as well I'm feeling very proud of myself so on to more cream we're going to add some more depth in these other wounds over here with again a uh, same bruise wheel just the darker red because we don't want it to look like a fresh wound we want it to look obviously like it's been there for a while or maybe is decayed and whatnot i uh, used my claw to help open up the application so i could get some real nice color on the ends make it look yeah, nice and scary and then inside the application to give the appearance of like gums. So I'm going around the outside with this red, I'm blending it in a little bit, and I wanted to add a little bit of yellow to the teeth too. Again, just to keep continuity. My teeth aren't like stark white, so I think that's fair. And lastly, a little bit of this very dark um, purple blue that's in the bruise wheel especially around the edges of the wound. A little bit, you know, kind of dashed around, but I'm feeling like a zombie. Yeah, the kind of sexy, necrotic look. We love it. We're living for it. We need a happy dance moment. Inside, getting that gum line real ooky spooky. And again, we just need another moment of celebration because this is really what we were aiming for and bada bing, bada boom, we nailed it. On to lashes. So I just took um, regular and older pair of lashes I had and cut them into little pieces so I could create a bit of a like, disorganized spider lash. So there we go. We got little chunks of lashes on the top and then one on each side on the bottom grabbing our mascara to blend the fake and real lashes together. I gently, again, because they're not the full strip, so gotta be careful with that glue, but our eyebrows are on it. So we're gonna finally powder. Let's powder this puppy down. I wanted to wait to do a final powder for all the cream until after I was certain where I wanted the blue highlights, but let's add a little bit of setting spray let that dry, admire ourselves for a moment, and then we're gonna add a little bit more moss because I couldn't help myself and I wanted more. So I took some more liquid latex and a little chunk, I tore off a little chunk of the moss and I'm using the back of one of my brushes to hold the moss against the liquid latex until it dries, essentially. Yep. And then I'm going to do my body, but you can't see it, so we'll be back, gorgeous. Here we are. Wig, outfit, costume, on it, backdrop, yas queen. I did a little application on my hand, too, because if I'm being perfectly honest with you, I was running out of white body paint, so um, we had to get a little creative. Now we're going to add our very second to last step, our black lipstick 
spreading that out nice and fine getting some good solid color in there and I personally like to use the black liquid lipstick to just give that dirty teeth moment now we just gotta work it work that zombie look for the camera and check out my patreon if you would like to see the final pictures from the photo shoot thanks for joining me guys